everyone, I hope you're doing well. My name is Katie and I'm very excited to be reviewing Luckiest Girl Alive by Jessica Knoll. Now I had been seeing this in like the front section of bookstores because it was a very popular book bestseller. I would always seen it, picked it up and kind of put it back down. I couldn't decide if I thought it was going to be my cup of tea and if I was going to like it. And a lot of you guys were asking me to review this because you've kind of been in the same boat. So I'm really excited to hopefully review this book, obviously spoiler free, in a way that'll really showcase to you if you as the viewer will personally like this book. Because I feel like on Goodreads, this book has either like five stars or one star and I think there's a very clear reason people are divided on whether or not they like it so I'll talk about that. Also and this is completely unrelated but I'm gonna be in New York City tomorrow. I've been a couple times before but I've never been during Christmas time. I'm just going up for the day so if you have any recommendations for things to do, see, or eat please let me know. So for a quick summary of this book without giving anything away it vacillates back and forth between two time periods. So during the present we have Ani Harrison. She's 28 years old living in New York City. She's, she writes like that advice sex section for a magazine called The Women or The Woman. Think of it kind of like a Cosmo. She's getting ready for her wedding to her fiance who's this big very wealthy Wall Street guy and she's also preparing to be on a documentary. Kind of picture like those dark documentaries you see on Netflix and it's going to be about something that happened to her back when she was in high school and, and kind of between her friend group as well. So she's kind of being prepared to be interviewed for this documentary. And the other half of the book takes place back during those high school days when she's 14 years old. She's just switched high schools and now she's at this kind of college preparatory high school. Picture it kind of Gossip Girl-esque. It takes place right outside of Philadelphia, I think it was, and it's kind of detailing the horrible things that happened to her. So seeing this book vacillate back and forth, it's interesting at first to figure out what was it that actually happened during her high school days that they're filming the documentary for because they don't spell it out for you right at the beginning of the book. The whole book you're wondering what is it that caused her to go from being this very naive 14 year old to this very pessimistic 20 year old woman. So generally I review books in the style of just kind of listing the pros and the cons but for this review I want to review it in the sense to kind of explain why I think you might like or dislike the book because again when I was looking at the reviews on Goodreads I was like these are really mixed for some really strange reasons so I kind of wanted to talk about that. So in this book there's a very kind of strange dichotomy of themes and tones so I think half the people who read this book are really enjoying that kind of thriller aspect during the high school days with the very dark themes that are happening there but then I think when it switches to the present, a lot of those people hate hearing about her dieting for her wedding and dealing with all these minor issues and fighting with her fiance and they're like, what the hell is this? This is boring. And then I think the other half of people really enjoy that kind of, not necessarily lighthearted section because I wouldn't say it's lighthearted, she's still dealing with events that happened to her when she was younger, but you know, it is kind of more so squabbles with her fiance and preparing for the wedding and arguing with her mom and things like that. I think a lot of people maybe enjoyed that section and then when it switched to the high school days and some of the shit that happens there, they were like, fuck, this is too much for me. So I would say you will enjoy this book if, and hear me out for a second because this is kind of a strange analogy, I think if you like watching the ridiculous nature and the insane ways that the Real Housewives of New York City live, if you like kind of watching and having a window into that lifestyle, not that this book is quality wise like Real Housewives of New York City, I think it's much better than that, but just in the sense if you like kind of looking at that sort of mocking nature of having a window into these women who are just obsessed with their exterior and how they look look and the labels of their handbag and how ridiculous it is. If you like watching that and if you like watching a very dark serious Netflix documentaries, I think you'll like this book but if you hate one of those topics and if you hate one of those types of shows, I think either way you're gonna end up disliking half of this book. Now personally I love both of those things so I ended up really enjoying this book. As a marketing wise they did compare this book a lot to Gone Girl and I would say it's only similar in the sense that this book is kind of a thriller. It's a bit like Dark Places where it goes back and forth in time period and it does have a very angry female protagonist, not when she's 14 years old, but in the present day when she's 28. She's very cold, she's very calculating, she's very pessimistic. But other than that, it's nothing like Gone Girl or Gillian Flynn. The writing styles are very different, the way she describes characters and the thoughts going through their head, you know, I just don't really think that's a good comparison. Now I kind of want to move on to talk about some of the themes of the book that I really enjoyed. And sticking to talking about Tiffany, I did really enjoy her character. And I know a lot of people, there were a lot of comments that were like, like, oh, she's horrific. I actually thought she was quite a good person and a much better person than I think I personally would have been if I had gone through what she did. A lot of people are also saying, this is minor, but they're like, oh my God, the name Ani Harrison is the most pretentious name I've ever heard. But I think that's actually one example of one of the major themes of this book is that kind of obsession people have with creating a facade that's false and being obsessed with how other people view us. Ani Harrison is a pretentious name because it's supposed to be, like because she's trying to change herself from what she was when she was 14.
14. And I saw so many reviews, I think I saw this come up like five, six times where people were saying, oh, this book is just like white girl problems. And during the present, I can definitely see why people say that because again, it's a lot of talking about how ridiculous it is because say for example, during the present, it's a lot of her talking about how she's doing like the Duke and diet. That's the one that I think Kate Middleton did as well in preparation for her wedding. But I, but I think what some people might be missing when they read this book is the author is pointing out how ridiculous and insane that type of lifestyle is and how all of these issues and things that Ani is obsessed with in the present day in terms of creating this false, you know, pretense of what she is. A major theme of the book is pointing out how ridiculous and stupid all of those little things are. So I actually really enjoyed that aspect of the book and kind of mocking a lot of the things that the women were doing. And the other theme of the book, which I'm not going to say outright because it's about what happens to her in high school, I do think was handled well. It's handled differently than I've seen a lot of other books handle this topic. And I know I watched some interviews with the author and I wouldn't recommend doing that until you read the book because I think it might spoil some things that happen. But after watching those interviews, the author discusses the fact that she went through a lot of the things that Tiffany went through in high school and writing this book is kind of a therapeutic process for her. So I don't know if it's necessarily fair for us to say, oh, well, she shouldn't have handled the subject matter in this way. I can't remember if I said this, but I did listen to this as an audiobook and I adore the narration. So I highly recommend if you're going to check out this book, download the audiobook, listen to a sample of it and see if you like it. I know this review style is different than what I normally do is kind of based off of responding to reviews that I saw. So let me know if you guys like this. I'm not going to do this for all of my book reviews, but I kind of just wanted to in this case. So I hope based off of this review, you guys will have a better understanding of if you think you'll like this and if you think you should check it out. And again, let me know if you have recommendations for stuff to do in New York City and I will see you guys soon. Bye.